Hey guys, Shay here. Today I'm going to be doing a director's commentary on my short film Internal, which I just posted on my side channel, Thinking360, about a month or so ago. Now I posted that film because I think it's really important to see where I came from as a filmmaker and especially how I approached making a short film without any formal teaching whatsoever. But it is true that Posting it took a lot of courage for me because looking back after learning so much since the summer of 2016, there are a lot of errors that I find in the film and a lot of things I would do differently. Namely, I would not cast myself in the film because I have no formal training as an actor and particularly don't find myself to be very adept at it. So we'll get that commentary out of the way before we even start. But yeah, so I just really want to do a commentary and take you guys through the film, tell you what I would do differently if I were to shoot it again, some of the things that went on behind the scenes that complicated aspects of it, and just give you an uh, insight into that whole process. All right, here we go. Now, right away, you can see some graininess to these close-up shots, and I really do like the layout of them and the cinematography, but having a less than quality lens definitely takes down some of the quality of the film, and that's something I would change in a new version. Oh, you crying? It's just now these first see. shots of the dialogue are very much blown out with their lighting, and I would also change things like that. I had learned nothing about lighting at the time, however. Now see, this is fun. This is actually one of my older brother's friends who I contacted very last minute and asked if she would be willing to do this. So pausing it right here. She is actually, I mean, like 24, 25, uh, but she's supposed to be playing someone much older. So I told her to try to dress older, baby not wear makeup, you know, all of those classic things that we assign with older age. But it was really sweet of her to be able to do that. And the shot I'm paused on right now of us laying on the floor, actually, as you can tell, we've become a lot closer. That was an instance of cheating the camera that we did, except I was unaware we were cheating the camera. I was just not keeping track of where people had been placed and things like that. It's very difficult to do when you're directing and also on camera. I would never recommend it. It was quite horrible and a hard process. All right, let's continue. Someone's excited. Well, yeah. Now's the time when I get to choose how I get to be seen. All very important stuff, right? What do you mean? See, now I hate this shot. I feel I could have done this so much better. It could have been a pan. It could have zoomed in and followed me. And I had to cut awkwardly into this shot where I'm already well established on the bed. If I could redo it, I would do it like this shot of Zoe now while she gets up and sits on the bed next to me. But I didn't really think that through at the time. And then with what I had to edit, this was the shot that we cut together. We're up front in high school. And in college, I get to choose what parts of me I want to shine. And so some of the dialogue here I would change a lot. I learned when I showed this at a film festival yeah. in the works in progress category, a very good piece of advice from them, which was to show instead of tell. And I have a lot of complicated dialogue here that seems kind of out of reach for a couple of, you know, teenagers in high school just about to go off to college. You jerk. It's very theoretical things and I would just tone it down and make the conversation simpler and more about their relationship and briefly mention college if I could do it a second time. Do you rock the can here look this time? You know, I probably should get a lint roller. Now with this scene, I would place a microphone right next to the moms talking so that you could make out more clearly what they're saying. It became a lot harder to hear as I was editing than I thought it was during the recording process. Another failure from not being behind the camera itself. Yeah. 
This scene itself, I thought, actually pieced together pretty nicely. The phone there was a bit washed out, but all in all, I had it framed exactly how I wanted to. I didn't completely hate my acting, and I really did like the sign in the background, which was a last-minute touch, but I did want that there, just in case people weren't kind of understanding Harper's internal struggle with herself. I wanted this big, blatant, black-and-white reminder that everyone is telling her to be her own kind of beautiful, and everyone around her thinks that she already is, or they don't care what she is, you know, they just love her, and yet she still feels this pressure to put on makeup. Now this scene was really difficult. Here we have our cameraman backing up with a boom pole attached with another person, and everyone is walking backwards and nothing is on any sort of rail or anything. It's just all handheld. I am surprised with how smooth it came out, and I do like the idea of incorporating, of incorporating the movement and that I was able to do that without really learning those techniques before. But I think some is missing from it. And I definitely think that there's a lot of feedback still from the ground and from the wind. And so I would definitely record this with a better mic or maybe even go back over it in sound afterwards. And see how you want to see it. Okay. Another thing with all of these transitions is they're quite fast. I was making this for a portfolio to apply to film school, and it had to be under 10 minutes. Initially, this film was 15 minutes long. That joke was actually one of my favorite parts of the entire movie because it just really hit home and it seemed so genuine, and a lot of people seemed to like it too. Why is it your favorite? Oh, I just think the height now here again you can tell that the lens is not so good, there's a lot of feedback. I really wish that I had brought lights with us, but I didn't really have a generator or anything at the time to do that. Because right here you can't even really see the kiss, something that's so pivotal to Harper's experience. So if I could reshoot this I would do a lot more lighting. That being said, I would also line up the shots where it goes between the boy and the girl here, Harper's love interests. I would line them up better and frame them correctly. I do think those last two shots there of Harper seeing her friend instead of this boy she's on the date with work really well, however. I don't know, um, I just saw... Here's where we get into the part where I dislike my acting, and a lot of people have told me it's not that bad, but I really don't think I did Harper's character justice. I think the boy is doing a phenomenal job. Meanwhile, my emotions are quite over the top and dramatic because I didn't really know what I was doing. This shot also has quite a bit of headroom for Harper. you don't need to explain anything else to me, but if you were... This is once again where we get more into the show instead of tell aspect, because the date is talking a lot and really trying to reassure her. But in this situation, an average high school boy probably wouldn't be able to be this eloquent. I thought these shots turned out really well. I didn't have to be in charge of the camera for these and I was able to focus more on acting. Fun fact, I put sort of a vapor rub under my eyes here so that I would cry and it worked so well I was genuinely crying the rest of the night even after we had finished filming for a couple of hours. So maybe don't do that. <laughs> I was on a budget, there are fake tears and things that work better and are safer for you so. And it did burn under my eyes a little bit. <laughs> This lighting is also a little blown out, and I think I would put a hair light and a background light for the rest of the car here if I could. I do like the organic feel of it, however, a lot of this movie deserved better lighting and better lenses and things than I had at the time. That shot, for example, it's very dark. I would have liked a lot more lighting. I also completely crossed the 180 rule here and don't pay it any mind because I also didn't know it existed. So I would probably do a pan around or I would just start the shot from this angle instead of starting with Harper getting out of the car from the back. Oh, 
But when I was going back through the footage, we didn't have a shot of me getting out of the car at this angle, so we had to go the other way. And that's the sort of thing that happens when you're making a film. You just kind of have to make sacrifices and hope that people will still be able to follow along. Also, side note, my eyebrows are, like, really intense here. <laughs> and I probably could have toned them down. Now, this shot was thrown in for time because I wanted to be able to transition to the close-up, but I couldn't find a good way to do it. So some people mentioned that it seemed kind of out of place to have those lights and that bokeh there, and that would be because I didn't have anything. So, good on them. I do, however, really like this shot, and I like how my feet eventually start to leave the light, kind of as in leaving the hope behind, and that it's focused on the phone itself. This shot as well, I thought, was just beautiful. However, after talking to people about it, and after the severity of the film, realizing that it didn't really hit home, I do think I would just cut it off sooner and have less of a message about potentially jumping, as I did want to leave the audience with some suspense, but I think without the time to build up that relationship, it kind of feels forced and like a grab for attention and a wow moment for the movie instead of something that I wanted to have be organic because of how real a struggle that is. The audio here also changes, and that's because our original audio was completely useless. So I had to take phone audio and try to make it work and make it sound like it was organic and in the moment and add background noises and wind and park things, stuff like that. And it's quite noticeable. I think some of it's actually better than other parts of just the film itself because it is, you know, recorded after the fact. But I do hate that it's such a blaringly obvious change from 75% of the film to 25% is in this completely different sound tone and things like that. I also would cut out entirely Harper's monologue about looking up at the stars and or make it much more simple because it's very lofty um, speech for an 18 year old. See right here where we're laughing about Perks being a wallflower feels much more organic and I feel like I would want to write it more along those lines. Also. If you pause, there's a bag of trash in the shot earlier um, that we just didn't see and it's not ours. Don't litter people. It could end up in the back of someone's short film and also it's bad for the environment. <laughs> oh, and before I unpause, I would also like to say I would definitely uh, not shoot at high noon as we did with this shot because the sun is way too bright. There's a reason that everybody shoots on cloudy days or indoors. And it's because everything is blown out and it's quite unattractive. The car looks like it's on fire. And yeah, so that's another thing that I would do differently if I were to make this another time. And that last line was actually a line that we had to cut from earlier where I was coming out of the bath where where Harper was coming out of the bathroom and asking her friend why you, why she decided to lay down on the cold hard floor instead of in the bed that was so close. And so we decided to fade that line out at the end because it's her friend retorting at the end of the film saying, why did you lay down so far from the nice warm car? And I kind of wish we had kept that in because I thought those felt organic and, you know, cute and sweet and with the moment, but for sake of time we couldn't. And yes, my friend Jake, uh, that is not his name, but that was his character's name, wanted to be left anonymous. And that's something I would also change about the film. That has something to do with, you know, potential job seeing it and things like that and personal reasons that our actor had. And so I think next time around I would either cast someone that would be comfortable being in the credits or, yeah, I think that's what I would do. Because I honestly, the whole point of this film was to not cater towards what society kind of says and does. And in a way of someone staying anonymous because they don't want to be associated with gay content, it does anyway. So I think that I would cast someone else if I had the opportunity. Not that I didn't love working with my friend, and I'm so grateful that he was willing to do that. But I think I would rather just have the whole cast be willing to be open about the experience and, you know, want to be associated with the film as you know, uh, novice and beginner as it might be. All right, well, that's internal. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you found some of this feedback helpful if parts of the movie felt odd, but you weren't sure why. And I would love to hear anything I missed in the comments. Please tell me if there is anything else about the film that you think could improve. I'm always looking to improve. I'm shooting a short film soon. And yeah, it'd just be really helpful. All right, peace out, guys. Love ya. Love ya.